Welcome to the third part in the series of the SAP Activate Project Manager certification called the Agile Framework. In this video, we would enable your understanding of the Agile Framework as well as help you enhance your knowledge on how the Agile Framework supports the SAP Activate methodology. We would also explain the differences between Agile and Scrum and the use of Scrum in SAP Activate. Not only that, we would also discuss the product backlog and team structure and responsibilities. Let's begin. What is Agile? Agile is a methodology that promotes the continuous iteration of the software development lifecycle processes. It compresses the software development lifecycle processes into a smaller and more manageable timeline that over time, yields an enhanced product build that satisfies the agreed upon requirements. This Agile methodology provides a flexible yet robust and simpler approach to building a product that may have undergone major changes through its development lifecycle. The Agile Manifesto was published in 2001 and its four core values are individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiations and responding to change over following a plan. Now let's talk about Scrum. Scrum was invented in the early 1990s, much before the formation of Agile Manifesto. Scrum is an iterative framework to develop complex products with continuous delivery and is widely used in complex product development across multiple sectors. Unlike other methodologies it is characterized by being lightweight, simple to understand and difficult to master. Like many other methodologies, Scrum is a type of Agile methodology. There are four notable differences between Scrum and Agile. Firstly for Agile, leadership plays a critical role. In Scrum, the approach is self-organizing with cross-functional teams. Secondly, with Agile, there is a strong and continual monitoring of the project phases which occurs during the life cycle whereas for Scrum, no such monitoring mechanism is used. The only exception being at the end of the sprint for feedback to the business and end users. Thirdly, the Agile methodology is based on an iterative approach whereas Scrum is one of the approaches under Agile and follows an incremental build. Lastly, Agile embodies a less flexible approach compared to Scrum which is a highly flexible framework. Now, let us describe some of the jargon used in the Scrum framework. Firstly, what is a sprint? A sprint is a time-boxed period between two and four weeks when the Scrum team resolves the business problem by providing a working software. Secondly, what is a burn-down chart? A burn-down chart shows the amount of work remaining as the development team moves forward into the project. The chart can be used to display a specific sprint or the complete product backlog. Thirdly, an epic. Simply put, an epic is a large user story that spans multiple sprints. There are scenarios where epics can span multiple scrum teams. An epic can generally come from a client or arise due to system requirements. A user story on the other hand is a high-level requirement with sufficient information that the development team can use to estimate the work product. For Scrum, the user story has a role, a feature and a benefit. In SAP, we capture the headline and a short description of the work product. In SAP, we also prepare traditional requirement document and streamline templates. A product backlog is a list of requirements, also known as user stories, arranged in a specific order to enhance the value of the delivered product that needs to work upon to create or maintain the product. The product backlog is usually managed by the product owner and there can be only one product backlog for a product. Another key term in Scrum is a sprint backlog. A sprint backlog consists of the product backlog items for the given sprint along with a plan detailing the delivery of the increment, a functional software product, and the realization of the sprint goal. Story mapping is a key step in identifying the complete requirements or gaps in user stories. The map captures the activities and tasks that a user performs during a specific process. Velocity is another key term. It is a metric that gives you the amount of work a team is doing or can do in a single sprint. As you complete more sprints, you can calculate the velocity by summing all the work done divided by the number of sprints. Scrum teams are generally self-organizing and cross-functional. A scrum team consists of a product owner, a scrum master and the development team. In a scrum team, there is no hierarchy. There can be multiple scrum teams and a scrum of scrums in one SAP S4 HANA implementation. Now, let's define the different roles in the team. Firstly, the scrum master. The scrum master is a servant leader who promotes and supports scrum as defined in the scrum guide. For the internal members of the team, the scrum master ensures that they all understand the scrum theory, practices, rules, and values. 
Additionally, helps the members of the organization who aren't part of the Scrum team by guiding their interactions with the Scrum team. The key responsibilities of a Scrum master in the SAP S4 HANA project implementation is to facilitate, guide, motivate, and enhance the Scrum usage in the organization. The Scrum master is the one who is responsible for arranging and facilitating the Scrum ceremonies, creating necessary documentation and helping resolve any impediment. Secondly, the product owner role is accountable for maximizing the value of the product. The product owner can take the input from various stakeholders to build the product backlog but is the sole owner of the backlog. The product backlog cannot be changed by anyone except the product owner with the exception that this responsibility is delegated to the development team. In a traditional SAP implementation project, the business owners or process owners provide the requirements. The product owner in consultation with the business or process owners provides the requirement in terms of user stories during the sprint planning meeting. The user story is further clarified, if the need arises, by the product owner with the necessary support from the business or process owner. By definition, a product owner represents the business and defines the product features, sorts them in a specific order, and decides the product release date. Thirdly, the development team is a cross-functional team that consists of professionals who work on the user stories to deliver a releasable increment per the definition of done at the end of the sprint. The development team is a self-organizing team who manages their own work, enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of the team. The development team is considered the third pillar of the Scrum framework. The project manager is not part of the Scrum team. In an SAP S4 HANA implementation project, the project manager will oversee all the facades of the project management. The project manager will have traditional project management activities to fulfill the prime responsibility of meeting the business objective of the project within the defined constraints. What is a Scrum ceremony? Mandatory meetings in Scrum are called ceremonies. There are four mandatory meetings that should happen at the specified time. They are the sprint planning, the daily scrum also known as the stand-up meeting, the sprint review or iteration review and the sprint retrospective. Each of the scrum ceremonies can be differentiated by who is responsible, when the meeting should occur, the output expected of the meeting and the objective of the meeting. There are also some other meetings such as product backlog refinement. Not only that, other meetings can be scheduled as needed, such as for issue resolution or risk assessment. Scrum's artifacts provide transparency across the project team and opportunities for inspection, adaptation, and improvements. One of the three pillars of Scrum is transparency, and these artifacts provide maximum transparency of key information so that everyone has the same understanding of the artifacts. Product backlog, sprint backlog, and increment are three artifacts of Scrum. Agile project setup in an SAP S4 HANA implementation project may vary based on a number of factors including the size and scope of the implementation, project budget, resource availability, geographical presence of the business users, political scenario at the client's locations, and many other factors. A minimum value product, MVP, is a concept that is based on the fact that clients may want to include only the must-have features in the initial release. This concept is very useful in SAP S4 HANA implementations because of the tightly integrated nature of the implementation in which these integration requirements will become must-have in the second and subsequent releases. One way of setting up your project team is to consider the geographical spread, where each country can have its individual scrum teams and project manager. After the geographical build is complete, the team can start integrating the multi-geography facade of the project based on the global roadmap. You should consider several factors for this approach, such as the local requirements, solution feasibility at the local level, and the global rollout roadmap. Another approach specifically for the Greenfield implementations is to follow the path of sunsetting the client's existing infrastructure and or legacy enterprise resource planning, ERP, systems. If a certain legacy ERP system is retiring for example where the client has hosted their financial system, then you can target that system first. How do we create product backlogs on an SAP S4 HANA implementation project? Creating product backlogs is the first step in producing the business requirements. You perform this activity during the explore phase of the SAP Activate methodology. After you have the product backlog, the product owner, in partnership with stakeholders and business owners, prioritizes the user requirements. It's critical to understand that the product backlog contains only the high-level requirements, starting with epics. Creating product backlog starts with requirements gathering which can be done via three steps. 
Firstly, the use of business process workshops to verify the business processes and overall scope of work. Secondly, the baseline build. The baseline solution is built using an iterative process. The baseline should be built using the client's data and the structure. Thirdly, the use of solution validation workshops. These workshops essentially allow you to validate the base build with the business and end users. After requirements gathering, you would need to prioritize the requirements, after which you must have clear definitions for ready and done. In Scrum, there is nothing called almost ready. Either the requirement is fully ready to work upon or it isn't ready. Similarly, when the development team declares that the sprint and the underlying user stories are done, then everyone must understand the meaning of the word done. The interpretation should not be conditional or different. As the Scrum team matures, it's expected that the definition of done will include more stringent and valuable criteria for the better quality of the product. We have come to the end of the video, the Agile Framework. In this U video we covered the Agile approach and Scrum framework. We also touched on Scrum terminologies such as burn down charts, epics and more. In addition, we learned about the role of the Scrum master, product owner and development team as well as the various Scrum ceremonies. Not only that, we covered the product backlog and highlights on how to build it. In the next video, we would delve into understanding agile delivery. Do please let me know in the comment section what you think about the video and what would like to see or questions you would like answered. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share. Also, please remember to turn on notifications so you can know when the next video drops.